new one-year statute of limitations for filing for post-conviction relief in Oklahoma. I'm Tulsa Attorney James Worth, and that is the topic that we have. It has to do with the new law that went into effect November 1st of 2022 from House Bill 3383, and it regards the time frame to file for post-conviction relief. Well, this new law was obviously a response to all of the activity for post-conviction relief and appeals related to McGirt, and what it does is it puts in a one-year statute of limitations, and that statute of limitations um, is in Title 22, Section 1080.1, and it provides now that a one-year period of limitations shall apply to the filing of any application for post-conviction relief, whether an original application or a subsequent application. The limitation period shall run from the latest of, number one, the date on which the judgment of conviction or revocation or suspended sentence became final by the conclusion of direct review by the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals, or the expiration of time for seeking such review by the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals. So if you do a direct appeal where you're appealing your conviction, and you've got an appeal of right then where it has to be heard, it goes to the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals, they decide the issue. If they deny your appeal at that point, that starts a one-year clock during which you can file for post-conviction relief. Now, this is a little bit unusual because for post-conviction relief, it's not supposed to be a secondary direct appeal. So the idea that you're required to do it directly after your other appeal within a year is a little bit strange. But ultimately, the goal of this is to try to prevent post-conviction relief filings uh, with McGirt coming, a lot of activity in that regard. They're trying to make it more difficult. But post-conviction relief is supposed to be out there when new evidence comes up or when there's new arguments, things change. And you generally don't want a time limitation on that uh, because if there are unusual circumstances where you have somebody who has been convicted and they're factually innocent, you want to have avenues to relief to come forward, and this is another thing that makes it more difficult. Uh, the one year can also run from when the governor revoked parole or conditional relief, um, also from when a new constitutional right has been um, uh, recognized by the United States Supreme Court. So this is uh, specifically related to things like McGirt, where uh, it was considered to be a subject matter jurisdiction issue, but then they reframed it in order to deny post-conviction relief. They reframed it as being a new constitutional uh, right, and then they said it doesn't apply retroactively, so they denied him anyway, but then they want to put this additional protection in there to say that even if it were to apply, well, we've got this one-year statute of limitations, so if there is something new like McGirt, then you need to file your application for post-conviction relief within one year of that being decided. Um, so other ones, within one year of the date um, which the factual predicate of the crime or claims presented could have been discovered through the exercise of due diligence. Another one, the date on which any impediment to filing an application created by a state actor in violation of the Constitution is removed. So if you've got an argument where you're being denied the opportunity to file post-conviction relief, then once that is whatever's preventing you from doing so, if it's a state actor, once that stops, you've got a year from that time frame. Also says that subject to the exceptions provided in this section, this limitation period shall apply irrespective of the nature of the claims raised in the application and shall include jurisdictional claims that the trial court lacked subject matter jurisdiction. So it purports in this statute to say even if the court lacks subject matter jurisdiction, if you've got an argument, you can only still bring it within that one year period of time. So this is another one where the, the state is essentially redefining the meaning of things because the court lacks subject matter jurisdiction. Then by fundamental law that's always been the case, that can be raised at any time. If you're alleging the court never had the authority to do what they did, that's an issue if the court lacked the authority to do it, so you should be able to raise it at any time. That's been pretty standard under law, but here they say that applies even in cases of subject matter jurisdiction. Again, a reaction to the McGirt case. So that is the new law it goes into effect or has gone into effect November 1st of 2022. Um, makes more complications for filing, filing post-conviction relief, so that is something that you're looking into for yourself or a friend or family member. Certainly, you're going to want to talk to an attorney about that and get their legal advice, which is specific to the circumstances there. Uh, so to contact uh, to an attorney at my office to get an appointment scheduled to do that, you can go online to makelaweasy.com.